All right, so Clementi Sonata, or actually Sonatina number one. It's maybe the most straightforward example of Clementi's music, maybe not, but it kind of takes his most basic elements, arpeggios, scales, and makes this pretty, uh, I don't know, neat Sonatina movement out of them. So the first figure is the one in the right hand. And now it could be fingered pretty much any way. Right, having this chord, or you can anticipate that top G coming up and you can stretch out the full four note full chord, and that way you would finger it with two, three, two, one, one, two, three, two, one, five, and then you pull in uh, at the very end uh, when you get to let me go ahead and highlight right here. So, a couple of options, I don't really think it matters, you should experiment, but just be aware if you do 3-5-3-1, three, three, be ready to stretch out your hand like this. And I would really make sure that my second finger ends up on D in that case, that way all you have to do is pull in number 1 this way. Um, but anyway, let's, let, me, let me go with this fingering. Right, and then I would literally jump to this position, which I'll mark. And I always encourage everyone else to mark things so that you don't just see the notes and fingers. Uh, I think that's the one I'm looking for. But I accidentally didn't quite prepare ahead of time correctly. Ah, there it is. Okay, so I've got this thing that I'm trying to draw. Here it is. Right, you literally jump like this. In fact, I should probably draw it more like this. Right, so five finger position. Now, three, four, three, four, five is a good idea if you have strong three and four. If you don't, two, three, two, three is fine as well, and then just do something like that. But what you want to practice is this shift. Right, so thumb under, three and four over. And then as soon as you hit three, you flick out. So it's a kind of a double position shift, perhaps. Um, something along those lines, right? So on one, you're here. On three, you're like that. In fact, let me go ahead and do it even better. That still not so good. There. Right, that's the move you want to practice when you're trying to nail this, what is it, 13 eighth note passage. Right, and one of the things you'll notice, I try to stay in position. There's a lot of uh, playing that I see amongst some of my students, some of the other players who... It just kind of feels like the hand position always wobbles around some midpoint instead of just being where it needs to be. So at the end of this phrase, right, that's all you're doing. You're not really doing something floppy like this. You're just in position and going five, four, three, two, one. Now notice I'm kind of pulling my fingers in towards my hand, so I've got full control over how I press these keys. Some people kind of over uh, vibrate their forearm, I find, when they press simple notes. Yeah. Okay, so then into it. A little tricky if you use three, four, five, because those fingers are, of course, quite hard to control, but with some practice and attention, eventually it becomes possible. And then finally, get to that thumb. Notice I'm using my favorite in-reverse method, or gobs as I call it, uh, goal-oriented backward stepping. So be on one, get three and four over like this, so I'm right here, yeah? I'm on one, holding three and four, and what I wanna practice is this. Right, so as soon as I hit three, one flicks out. So that's really the most important moment about this whole first phrase so that it's smooth. So let's let's do the whole thing.
right? You could kind of notice my first finger being a little sluggish coming out during that cyan uh, highlighted moment. So one more time. That was a little better. So it doesn't, you don't have to go fast. You, you just want to find a steady tempo you can work with. Right, but that's just half of the story. And of course, with the left hand, you have a little of coordinating to do. Uh, I would actually do this. That allows me to have a better spread for my left hand. And then five, uh, you know, one is right here. I pull in pretty much right away. So where you see that red bracket, I would actually go even further. Yes, one definitely wants to be on that G and I would in fact stretch that bracket out all the way to the beginning like that. But in addition to this, once I'm done with that G, the bottom G is what I'm trying to say, in the last measure here, same idea as right after that cyan highlight in the right hand, that. You want to collect all the fingers together so you can roll into the following line, wherever that is, there, somewhere, yeah? So you really want to be in position to do that. That's what I'm doing in the left hand. In the meanwhile, my right hand is finishing its five note group. Right. Also important to rem remember is that right here, reset your position in the right hand. Don't practice doing this. And, and then what? Oh, oh, you know, I'm in trouble. So literally stop right here. Let's do an uh, indigo highlight and make sure your right hand has moved. Be sure you're here. What, what am I doing wrong? I'm playing the right hand, I'm doing the left hand, but I'm not practicing this move in the left hand. Right? So I want to be like this. You don't have to hold that G for a long time. All, this style of music is detached, right? It's classical style. You don't hold full tenuto length for the quarter notes. It's basically a full length eighth note, right? So I'm going to highlight it orange. As soon as you hit C, make sure this has happened. And then when you hit indigo, this has happened. So all these position adjustments seem straightforward, easy to understand, simple, but unless you practice them right away, you're asking for trouble in, in terms of smoothness of your phrasings, the flow of the rhythms, right? So the practicing backwards, you have this, right? I can literally be right away in this position on just before that indigo highlight, right? So, right, so as I go into that fo following line, I'm all set. And you can give this editorial suggestion of a hairpin diminuendo a chance. Uh, perhaps it's a nice contrast. Go from forte to piano. I'm not sure what Clementi wrote in his urtext, uh, so to speak, the autograph, but doesn't matter. Right. You want to have that control. And then before that, we, if you go with my three idea in the left hand, all you have to hit is a bunch of C's as you articulate the right hand. I'm pretty sure I've seen an edition of this piece where the first note in both hands was separated staccato. But I'm not sure where I saw it. Right, that's the first important bit, so let's highlight it red. 
right? So I'm literally stopping and checking. And to do it as part of the flow, I'm checking I'm on the yellow, right? And I'm going backwards, so I'm doing something like that. That's all I'm doing. Actually, if I'm doing the legato C to G, I'm holding the C down, right? And that's going to be a green highlight. Uh, so C is down, and then all I'm doing is this. Simple idea, but has to be carried out. There it is. And then hold E, right? And then finally hold both C's. Always stopping to check, did I move or did I not move? There it is. And so the first, the first two bars become very easy. almost two bars. I'm stopping on that yellow. Then the third bar, right? We talked about the cyan highlight. So again, back up from that B3434, uh, three, four, three, four, B, C, B, C, right past uh, cyan. So you're right here, yeah? Kind of stuck on that middle of the measure. So right here. And I'm, I'm just making sure I'm in position with both hands, everything is Hunky dory, and now cyan highlight. Boom. That's all I'm doing, just that shift. Perfect. Once you've mastered that transition, maybe back up to D. Right, always stopping to check that the position shift has happened. Right, and then finally, beginning of that measure, F and C in the left hand. Right. Nothing really difficult to understand, but it has to be practiced. Until you're absolutely 100% sure the moves are taking place. And then a couple of similar ways to practice in the indigo and orange highlight section. Let's move on, because that pretty much sets us up for the rest of the piece. First two measures are almost the same. Oh, by the way, um, slightly different because, of course, we arrive into the left hand with finger five. So one thing that I would do is that. So this idea is that I stretch one to, to C and two to F sharp. Here, I would really recommend this. I, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but just this whole idea of using two, three, two, one, one, and three is already on E just has something appealing to me. I, I don't know. It It's not that I'm the arbiter of finger truth here, but that, that just seems like it solves so many problems if you do it this way. But again, Whatever you choose, just practice the uh, consequent position shifts. All right, so let's move this back up over here. Try this. Hmm. So that second finger was not on F sharp. It's really all you want to do is that. So here, if you use my 2-3 finger in idea, all you have to do is bring in that thumb motion right there at the end of the measure. So I'll highlight it red. Right, that's all I want to do. Well, actually what also happens is my second finger moves over to D. Like that. Could almost move earlier, but you don't have to do it. As long as on the red highlight you're like this. Now here, this position change is also pretty important. Ah, one other thing I'm not doing. So let's do all the moves we need to do. With that square, and I'll, I don't know, make it pink. Also, just like at the end of the first measure of this line, the red highlight shows the right hand thumb move. With the pink highlight, we have the left hand thumb move. 
note. Right, so these two thumb motions are extremely important if you don't want to land in trouble at orange highlight. Because that's where it's, it's all really taken off, isn't it? Now, as far as articulation, again, this is classical style music. If you don't see a legato slur, and I'm not fully convinced all of the legato slurs in this edition are Clementis, it's very likely some of them are editorial, but definitely in the left hand, very crisp and detached, none of this kind of sluggish legato plane of the left hand. So, this means you could instantly reposition right here, right? So, then, without waiting, you can reposition right here, the thumb. Kind of hard to do it, sorry. Probably need to zoom in like this, yep. And then, as you play the D, another repositioning of the fifth finger. So every, either right before the note that you strike, or right as you strike the note. Actually, right here we're all set. Both of those fingers could be ready. Yeah. Right, so if I highlight or I show the position using the bracket, it's like this. So I could literally stop right here and just check. Let's call it yellow. Yeah, and right before it, I could stop on yellow to check that I executed those squares. Yeah. Then right before it, let's highlight it green. I'm starting on G, three is ready on C, and all I'm practicing is this thumb move. Yeah? If I go all the way to the yellow, making sure that third finger is right on that G. Very, very specific position adjustments. Not hard, but they need to be practiced. All right. Yeah, I don't need to move anything else. Sometimes you kind of want to move a lot when you don't need to. Okay, so that's the left hand. In the meanwhile, a couple of tricky adjustments in the right hand, so I'll show them. Uh, let's get this square, rectangle, whatever. Zoom in a little bit. As you play B, that happens. Except I want to make it a little clearer. Something like that. Um, right, so I'm going over the thumb with two and four. That's the first move. As soon as I hit four, what happens? Just the thumb. It's one of those double position adjusters, double step position shift where as you're playing a legato passage, which this seems to be, you're kind of first going over the thumb with the long fingers as the thumb bends under, or where is it here? And then uh, as I come out, this happens. Though that's the reason for those two red rectangles. And then same thing right here. Uh, but the difference is, I'm really needing to get a pencil to help me. The difference here is that you don't actually have to flick your thumb out because then you go back to G with the thumb and actually have to extend the rest of your fingers like I show and I'll zoom back out like that. Okay. So, the scale that you see at the very end is pretty straightforward. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. So it's just like any standard single octave G major scale. I'm not gonna spend much time on that, but getting into that measure, let's work backwards. So I'm on G's and I'm going to maybe use uh, cyan highlight. That's my stopping point. I'll use this blue line 
to show where I am starting from, right? So all I'm doing right now is this. That shows to me I am in position in both hands, left hand and the right hand. Good. Moving the uh, blue line like this, I'm on F sharp and my thumb is already tucked underneath, yeah? Ready to strike G. And when I stop on that cyan highlight, I'm making sure that red rectangle position shift is taking place. Nice. Then I go back a little more. Now it's getting a little trickier, but still okay. Right, A, finger four, D, fifth finger. Ready to strike F sharp. Thumb is still tucked underneath. Just two strikes. It should be pretty straightforward, but check that you are actually making these position adjustments. Okay, good. Then, now we strike, we hold G. We could hold D in the thumb of the left hand, but we will be letting go of that note pretty much right away because um, I'll just show you. Mm, maybe using the this extension, right? Since that's pretty much the length of all my left hand notes, I'll be holding them right into the eighth note of the right hand and then letting go right away. Okay, so right from here, uh, no, actually from here, yeah? I'm holding the D, I'm about to let go, G with thumb, Long fingers are coming across. Right, and that's all I'm practicing. And one more game, well, one more time. And I'm just getting stuck and checking my position. Uh, and then finally, let's do this part. All right, now that's tricky because as soon as I hit one, I have to come over like this. And if you find that tricky, that suddenly you have to do this and then flick back out on the cyan highlight, I suggest an intermediary position stop. Uh, what highlight should I use? Mm, let's use purple. All right, so on purple, I literally stop. So like this, right? Just that because I want to put my attention on that coming across the thumb with the long fingers, right? That's all I want to do. Because from that point, from the purple highlight, it's pretty straightforward. As I go into the cyan, sure, across the, the bar line, I just have to flick out my right hand and I'm done. But doing two position changes in rapid succession can, tends to be tricky. Right, so I'm at the thin blue line, thin indigo line. And then stopping on the purple. One more time. That's all I want to do. That four is on, two, on F sharp, uh, four. Two is on F sharp, three is on G, four is on A. That's all I want. Oh, and the thumb is still tucked underneath. Right, that's a typical position for playing turns. And this is a sort of a turn, not quite, but a version of a, of a four note turn. Okay, so uh, putting the, the hands together, mm. start in position. Mm -hmm. I see my problem. So as you can tell, I'm not quite with it. I'm not quite fully in control of all the position changes. So expect that to be the case. Break it down. First measure only. First, I'm in this position in the, in the left hand. I'm in the end of the measure with the right hand. 
red highlight good right oh oh I remember um, two three I decided on two three forgot what I decided on ha <laughs> ha So that makes it easy. Now I've kind of isolated, compartmentalized the first measure of this line. I know that all I really have to work on is that position shift in the right hand. Okay, now next measure. That shift in the thumb of the left hand, pretty tricky. And then this too long on the thumb. So again, I would practice backwards because as long as I'm okay at the, what is it, orange, brown, whatever you want to call this highlight, no problem. Right? If I can be in this position in both hands, I should be able to continue just fine. So I'm going to stop here and then here. Oh. Actually, I just realized. If I choose these fingers, two, three, I can play this C with two, right? So I'll just make it obvious. And then I don't really have to work so hard to transition into the orange slash brown highlight. Yeah, I like that. Oh, sorry. Oh, see, I'm so used to putting in my thumb now that I'm actually, uh, I've actually created a problem for myself by going with the fingers that I ultimately decided against for this reason, or for the reason of more efficient position shifting. So, yeah, um, orange, orange slash brown highlight. Here we go. So I'm here, 4 2, yeah, and right before it, I'm on 2. And my third finger is still on E, so I'm doing this. Right, I'm stopping on the orange, or sorry, brown. That's it. Notice I'm keeping my left hand stable because it doesn't need to do anything. And now here it does. Beginning of the measure. Nice. I like it so much more. Okay, so I'm starting out with my finger 2 on F sharp and it doesn't change until after the brown highlight. That's it. It's just so much easier to do it. Now, after the brown slash orange highlight, just by the amount of highlights you see, you can tell it's a busier practice uh, segment. But same thing, don't fear, take it in isolation, work through it backwards, kind of check your position at every step and you will be fine. All right, finally, for this video, let's look at the second theme. So that's the third line of this page. All right, we go through that G major scale and... So we alternate between leaping octaves in the right hand, then rising scales. Occasional Alberti bass in the left hand. All standard classical devices. Easy to play in isolation. Uh, would I do other fingers here? You could literally play four on A. It's a little tricky though. Myself, I prefer fourth finger or third finger on black keys because they're shorter and the fingers are longer. If you like the idea of sliding inside the keys and using the finger 5, that's fine. Right, either way it's it's not the issue with this passage. So, as you're playing the A A A A, don't leave the thumb hanging on A. As soon as you come off, goes over to B.
You don't have to move the second finger on C, but definitely the thumb. So that it's easy to land on the right note across the bar line. And as soon as you're done with that final A, the other fingers come in. Something like that. So first thumb and then the long fingers. So end of the measure position is this. Before it, this. So two important position adjustments in the right hand first measure. Left hand just holds this. If you use 5-5 five five as written, you will have a little bit of a headache in the left hand. So if you go with my idea of using maybe 4 and a 2, and then following up with 3, it cures that headache. Right, I'm here to play the G. Right, so across the bar line, if I'm in this position, I'm set. Again, I'll use my colorful lines to show what I'm doing. Um, I don't know how long you want to hold that final G with three. You can hold it a little bit or you can let go right away. It really doesn't matter. Maybe a little bit of a length to it is nice, so it's not a true staccato. You know, maybe too abrupt, I don't know. But ultimately, this piece is not about every articulation being right, it's more about what's the rhythmic flow like. Right, you want to follow into this groove. Okay, so right after that three, make sure you practice this. You could do that too. I mean, it is possible to strike the uh, G with the five, and then you don't have to do that. Uh, uh, this thing, uh, the the rectangle. Uh, so so it's up to you. You can either do this way, or you can do it this way. Right, strike the G with five, not three and then you don't have to make the position adjustment. Kind of, it's a toss up between the two. I can't tell you one is better than the other. There's something nice about being ready, in, being in position before you strike that final G. Perhaps try that. Now here, as soon as possible, put the thumb on C. Maybe as early as that. So you're here. And I'm striking F sharp. My, my hand is big enough to stretch the thumb out to the C. And if it's not big enough, maybe wait till G, but get it out there. Same thing, as soon as you hit C, you will be moving the fifth finger to the top C. And then slight adjustment in the thumb. Uh, maybe even finger two as well, you know what? Let's try that. So D and G. Zoom back out and make it like this. In fact, you can do that. You don't need to wait to move this second and fifth finger to the to their positions right away. Two here, five there. Good. But the thumb following to D. So that motion. Again, let's stop and check. Cyan. Sit. That's all you want to do, nothing else. 
uh, after the final C, big, big, big adjustment. Uh. If your hand is big enough, you could actually play that with a four. But let's imagine it's not big enough. Let's imagine five really is the only option. Then, right here. As soon as that C is done, this happens. Right, that kind of flicking out of the five, followed by putting the third finger on B. Notice I'm right on the edges of those white keys. Same thing, as soon as I'm done with D, by this point I'm definitely over G with the thumb, and it goes right here. Cool. And the final note is very important. Right, I'm not doing, doing that, I'm doing that. So I'll highlight it indigo and I'll add the highlight. Remember it's it's uh, a sharp there. Now the other thing I could be doing is this. Yeah, so no, don't wait for the left hand to move till the last minute. That's the position you want to look at for both hands, at the indigo highlight. In fact, fourth finger on A also, third on G, so it's a kind of a bit of a group of fingers. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say. Group the fingers correctly. There it is. So that's the end of this line, indigo. Right. Before that, A. Holding it, okay, let's put this, uh, let's use a green line. And again, a very specific squeeze to my hand position. And then, meanwhile, I'm just waiting here with my left hand. Maybe the second finger in the left hand better here, because I'll be doing something like this. I don't want to be stuck between the black keys. So all I want to do is just stop at the indigo, check my position change. Uh, maybe go from here. Stop and check. All right. Always stopping and checking that position shift. Eventually you get all the way to here maybe. Make sure you start with the thumb on this G. And again, stop and check. And here. Very similar, except now I'm really aware of pulling in my thumb and then stopping with that fingers across. Finally. This is where it gets tricky. You have to move the left hand, you have to pull in the thumb, you have to remember to bring the long fingers across and at the indigo. Maybe stop right here. Let's mark it red. And then finally, so I'm making sure I, before I go on past the red, I've already made the adjustments. So you can see it's not a hard sonatina, of course not. But if you want to do it right, it pays to pay attention to detail. Let's see if this works, yes. Final line. I would just do the whole octave position shift in the left hand. So it's this, and then this, right? and then finally another octave. So if you go through them as blocks, nice 
nice thing is that the D, you don't have to look down at all. You just pull the thumb to right above where the fifth finger was. So fifth is right here, thumb is going to be right here. You don't need to look, your, your brain knows where your body is in space, usually. Now here, if you get used to putting the third finger on G, then you just get used to this idea of putting five where your third used to be. Right, so after that D, boom. And I like to find where the third should go by feeling that tight squeeze between the two black keys. Because if you miss, you feel like, ah, oh, okay, my third is in this big gap. If you do this, it just feels uncomfortable. It's a big stretch. But usually this feels just right. Third stuck right on that G. And then replace where third is with fifth finger. I'm not looking at my hand. And then just find that octave stretch. I mean, you, that's all you're doing. You're holding octave stretches in the in the left hand. In the right hand, first measure is all in one position, and then that same flick over of the long fingers right here. Stop. Let's call it cyan. And then as you strike the accent, flick out the thumb. There it is. Stop. Check. As you play the B, position adjustment. Let's call it orange. And then as you play the... Ah! Um, Okay, let's go with five. I, I like I like the idea of always using four, four, four for all these groups of four notes, and then doing this, coming over with finger two for the final G. But using finger five is absolutely fine. It's just a bit more of a squeeze. Both are possible. Whatever you choose, just practice that specific position adjustment. Putting it all together, you try. And try to do this backwards thing like I showed for all the other lines. And let me know how you feel, whether it gives you more control or not. Because more, even more important than going backwards is the idea of knowing where you're going to stop and check. So make sure you always choose your check and stopping points and make sure that... All 10 fingers are somewhere where they need to be, not random places you're not in control of. All right, so that's good for the first page. Uh, ask me questions. Hopefully I'll get to the second page or not, uh, depends. So 